Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration I'm going to show you some of the possibilities of using Microsoft Access together with SharePoint 2010. So here I have a simple contact list of some customers. What I'm going to do now is go into the list tab here and open this table or this list here with Access. And what Access down does now by default is link to the data on the SharePoint site. That's very different from what Excel is doing so and it's quite powerful. It does not export the data but you actually link the data. So here Access opens and it's connecting and there we go. You can uh, safely ignore this save changes. That is, is Access uh, trying to help you to actually modify the SharePoint site not just the data in it. Uh, I would rather do that with other tools so I'm going to ignore that for now. And now I'm going to go into this list, customers table. And as you see now, here we have um, live data. And if I actually make a change here, change the name Marianne to Maria. There we go. And you see I just basically pressed enter. And um, when I go into the customers list now and refresh this, you'll see that it actually changes right away. So you have the same kind of functionality that you do with the data sheet view but um, it also has a lot um, of other features that I want to show you and in my opinion access is much more stable than the data sheet view so I would recommend access over that. I'm going to show you some of the things that access can do that are hard to do in other ways. First I'm going to show you search and replace that's something I'm sure you've used in Word or Excel or whatever. There's no such feature really in SharePoint, but to do a search and replace here, say that all the owners want to be called CEOs now, so I'm going to replace that, just do a replace all, just like I would in Word, and you see it replaced seven occurrences of owner, and then I'm going to close this down, and just go back to my SharePoint site, and do a refresh again, and here you see now the uh, owners are no longer owners, they're CEOs now. So that's rather powerful, and of course you also have all the stuff, the filters, text filters, etc. Powerful, uh, but those are also in other places. Next thing I'm going to show you is how to make a query. So let's see if I go into the Create tab here, I have these things here. I'm going to start by doing a query design. I'm going to add the, tab uh, the customers table. If I had more tables linked here, I can do joins and I can do all kinds of cool stuff. But here I'm now just going to show how to work with this customers table. So let's uh, bring all the information in here and just run the query just to see that it actually works. Yep, it does. And that's a select query. Say that I want to show all these um, the people that have the contact title CEO now. I'll just write that down there, CEO. And I'm going to run that query run there we go and there we see all the 17 ones that are currently CEOs and if we go into the view here I can go back to the design view or I can actually go in and see the SQL view also here and um, there I see the select query being uh, made I can also of course do pivot table views and pivot chart views on this data but this data is not really relevant for that but um, that's also a possibility a very cool one so I'll go back to the design view now and show you another one where I can uh, make a table out of this, you know, export it into another table, that would be cool. But I can also append data and update da data, that might be rather useful. So the customers that are currently CEOs, they now want to be founders. So I'm going to uh, update to founders, update to founders, where they're currently CEOs. So the update to founders where they are currently CEOs. So I'm going to run that and again those 17 will have their titles changed. Ah, of course I can't have an update query on the asterisk, that's obvious. But it gives me a good help there so I'm going to run ag again. You're going to update 17 rows? Yes, I'm going to do that. Again I'll refresh and just show you that everything works. There we go, now they're founders. Of course they're not founders in plural, they're founders in singular so I'm gonna just change that back with a quick query if 
founders will now be founder. That's what they are. There we go. Update 17 rows. Very simply and quickly. There we go. Refresh that. Now they are founder. So you can make select, append, update, cross time, delete, queries, anything. Next thing I'm going to show you is how to make a form. That's very, very easy. Simply go to the table you want to make a form based on and click on the form. There we go. And now I have a form which I can go ahead and design and modify, etc. If I switch to form view, now I'm in layout view, then I can actually go ahead and update. So I'll change her back to Marianne there. And once I go to the next record, it will actually be updated as usual. Now she's called Marianne again. All right, uh, so that's the form. So if you want to have a quick update form that you can have full control over, then you can use Access. There are other options too for making forms, but I do want to show you this option too, because Access is definitely one of the tools that I think all power users of SharePoint should have in their toolbox. Next thing I'm going to show you is how to make a report. When you uh, have a list and you want to print that, it uh, does work to go um, into the regular, you know, IE or Firefox print, but um, you don't really have much control over the layout of this. It does remove the SharePoint navigation, but not much else really. If you want to have more control, then access is one of your options, and it's definitely the quickest option to get you started. So if I simply click on report here, I have a report which I can then go in and modify. And um, well, it's to to make a really good looking one, it might take some time, but um, it is a report builder. So if you're used to working with report builders, you certainly can work with this. And again, it uses live data from your SharePoint site. And of course, you can print this. It's made for printing. So I'm going to close that now and go ahead to the last one thing that I want to show you inside Access here. And it's the vis Visual Basic one. If you have the old school uh, knowledge of writing VBA code, then you can go ahead and insert modules and write code by, uh, here also. You can also write code behind the reports and behind the forms, of course, if you want to do that. And that, of course, again, works against the live SharePoint data. There's a lot more things that you can do with Microsoft Access together with SharePoint 2010, but that's all I wanted to show you for now, and that will get you started, I hope. Thank you for watching this demonstration.